Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2013 Million Dollar Challenge. Thank you very much. I think most of you know my esteemed colleagues over here, Richard Saunders, Jamie and Swiss, and Chip Denman. Now, I do want to apologize. I haven't been around this convention as much as I probably should have been, but I've been very hard at working on the Chris Angel new television show for the last, I know, for the last four months, which takes my, all my time. But I am here this evening, and uh, thank you all for showing up. Thank you all very much. Um, last year, how many of you were here last year when we tested Andrew Needles? Okay, good. So. There's some current news about Andrew, and uh, I'm gonna leave it up to a very good friend of the JREF, a gentleman who helped us out last year, also the president of the Australian Skeptics, Mr. Richard Saunders, please. Okay, thank you very much, Jamie and Banachek. It's a great pleasure to be back here again <clears throat> at the amazing meeting. Uh, and to be here again to do my small part in helping out the Million Dollar Challenge. It's very exciting indeed. So I'd like to talk briefly, if I may, about last year's challenge, especially for the benefit of those people who weren't here. And we might get that keynote slide up, if we may. There we go. Last year, for those who were here and for the benefit of those who were not, we tested a man by the name of Andrew Needles. Now, some months before, Mr. Needles, who lives in California, had written to me directly in Australia because he had seen some of the work I'd been involved with in exposing the power band, band which I always carry some with me anyway. And in what is a sign to me of his genuine outlook is that he was very keen to convince me that his powered device, his band, worked. Uh, people who b sincerely believe in what they're doing are very keen to convince the skeptic. And as far as he could see, I was the chief skeptic involved in this area, uh, and I should be the one who was convinced. Very long negotiations ensued between myself, Banachek, and Mr. Needles going over protocol after protocol after protocol. In fact, I suggested to Mr. Needles that this would be the opportunity and the event that he could uh, show the world that his device actually worked. And basically, the claim was that if you were wearing his device, his band, it would show an increase in your core strength, amongst, amongst other things. And we have a video clip to show you in just a moment, which illustrates how he went about doing the tests, which were very similar to the same sort of test we've seen with the likes of power balance and so on. In fact, if we have that clip ready, I think we can run it now. This is the million dollar challenge from last year. <clears throat> On top of the other. In the back, of the mix. If I get number seven to step on into the box, please. Good. And if you'll take your right hand, reach in the bag, take out the box. Again, make sure it's against the palm, the line. Turn around, face hand it is. Thank you. Place that in A, please. Oh, sorry. Change. Change hands? No, yeah, not yet. Place it in A. Thank you. Step back over there. Face us, reach in. Make sure the line goes against the palm. Turn around, please.
Place it in B, please. Wait, wait, are we switching hands or switching hands? Do me a favor. Yep, switch hands. Make sure the line goes against the farm, please. Yep, and if you'll turn around. Thank you. Back in that place. Big man, yep. Got it? Yep. If you'll turn around, face Amber, please. If you'll have a seat, please. Uh, is a dynactic bracelet in A or B? It's in A. It's in A. Target is A. Into the mic, please. Yeah. A. A. All right. If you'll open up A, please, and also open up B. Placebo is in A. And the dynactic bracelet is in B. you mark that as a pass or a failure? And at this point, you do understand that the test has failed, but we agreed that we would go through every trial until we do all 20, correct? Good. Yes, we're not going to put you through the rest of the test. It's quite all right. <clears throat> Just imagine about 18 more hours of that. <laughs> but uh, because the point is, um, on the occasion, uh, Mr. Needles, failed to demonstrate that his device worked any better than a, uh, a placebo band, which we had in the, uh, in the other box. And I think at the time he took it in, in, in his stride, and he was here even answering questions from the audience. And it's all well and good. But not so long ago we discovered that uh, he's put something on his website under the banner of thank you JREF. He now considers that those tests, in fact, prove his device works. We get back to what Banachek and uh, Jamie and Swiss were saying earlier, and indeed the subject of my talk uh, yesterday is, um, it's to us, it's a big indication, a red flag, of the sincerity of these people, that they'll come up with ways to explain failure and to protect their own belief systems. Uh, it's worth looking at if you Google thank you JREF and um, Denactive or Andrew Needles, you'll see that page. It makes for very, very interesting reading indeed. Well, now to this year's million dollar challenge. We have Mr. Brahim Adun in Algeria, and that's where he is right now, standing by. We're going to be hooking up with him very soon. His claim is one of remote viewing. In other words, by methods that, or ways we don't quite understand, Mr. Brahim Adun in Algeria can sense or view objects in another location. In this case, the other location is this very hotel. We have been fortunate to be working with uh, Mr. Adun's representative, Mustafa, who we'll, you'll be meeting shortly. What we were asked to do in order to make this test a reality was to find 25 
everyday objects. They couldn't be too small, and they must be objects that one could easily see from the other side of the room. In other words, no fine details or anything like that. So we did manage to find 25 objects. We passed those on to Mr. Adun and uh, his representative, Mustafa, who eliminated five of those objects to leave us with 20. A few points that, <clears throat> things I must point out. Now, Mr. Adun wants us to remember that normally he would prefer to do this sort of thing outside the holy period of Ramadan. And we acknowledge that that's what he's told us, but we acknowledge that he's given us his complete confidence, even though it is Ramadan, he can still achieve the result that he claims. So we do acknowledge that. And in choosing our 25 objects, <coughs> excuse me, we were asked to keep in mind various Islamic sensibilities. So we didn't choose a wine bottle, for example. And that was completely all right. In fact, it was up to us, the representatives of the JREF, to collect these objects. It wasn't up to the claimant. Here are the final 20. And as you can see, I think given we were under somewhat uh, limited time, we came up with the final 20 objects, which are quite, quite different, quite distinct. I don't think you could confuse one with another. And that certainly is our goal. And you'll notice each of them is on a large piece of paper with its corresponding number. Some numbers are missing. They were the objects that were eventually uh, disregarded. Mr. Adun must give us three of those objects that we chose at random. Those three objects have been secured in that room across the hall you've no doubt seen, which say Million Dollar Challenge and the door sealed. The odds we'll get into later with Chip. That'll come up soon. For your interest, the five objects that were considered unsuitable were a towel, a book, a notepad, a little brush, and a deck of playing cards. That's fine. We we're quite happy to accept that those, those items were not acceptable. Here is a photograph of the door, again, which you've no doubt seen. When it came time to secure the objects, one person, and one person only knew what the objects were, smuggled them into the, to the room, put them on the table in a very specific order as requested by Mr. Adun in Algeria, with a personal item of our friend Mustafa in the middle. That person left the room, locked the door, and applied the first lot of seal, of tape, you can see on the door. Then he beckoned to Jamie and Swiss, myself and Chip, and Mustafa, who were all down the other end of the hall. We walked up, examined the door, and then Mustafa continued to seal the door, all the cracks, and he wrote on a large piece of card some writing, as you can see in the close-up, put some more tape on. I countersigned it, as you can see down the bottom, even more tape, and that's where those objects have remained for the past three days, as requested by Mr. Adun. Now, ladies and gentlemen, given the limitations of such a test in such a hotel at this amazing meeting when we're all quite busy doing other things and having a great time, given those limitations, I think we've come up with a bloody good protocol and I hope we'll have a very interesting result for this year's Million Dollar Challenge. Thank you. So, as you just heard Richard say, three objects were chosen at random and, and kept secret. The test requires that all three be identified correctly, but we don't care what order, as long as the three are identified. Now, let's take a look at some of the probabilities here. Uh, in, if he were merely guessing, we should be not terribly surprised if he gets at least one. There's about a 40% chance of getting at least one of those three objects. In fact, there's about a one chance in 20 or 21 that he would get at least two. But to actually succeed and pass the preliminary trial, he must get all three. And the chances of that are one in 1,140. 
In fact, if we had asked every single person here at TAM this weekend to participate and take a guess, we might reasonably expect that just one of you would have gotten lucky and succeeded. But in this particular case, it's up to our one individual in Al Algeria, and he has the burden of one chance in 1,140. So, um, of course, Mr. Ibrahim Adun could not be here. He's in Algeria, but he has a representative here. I'm going to ask that representative to come up here. Mr. Mustafa, please. Would you come up, please? Give him a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you? Good. If you'll step right over here, please. And as the, um, the legal representative of Mr. Mr. Adun, um, you've read the protocol, you've agreed to the protocol. You also took a look at the room ahead of time and it was satisfactory, is that correct? Yes. And you've agreed to the protocol and Mr. Adun has agreed to this protocol, is that correct? Yes. Okay. What I need you to do is to make it really official and if you just sign that and put today's date on there as well, please. Thank you. You can fix it just right there. Thank you very much. Pass this over here so we don't lose that. If you will take that, please. Thank you. Just hold on to that for me. Um, at this point, we need to get Mr. Adun up on Skype. So if we can get Mr. Adun up on the Skype, that would be fantastic, please. Uh, still having issues right now? Yeah. So we have a backup plan if the Skype doesn't come up. They've been trying to get him on Skype this entire time. I'll ask him to speak in French. Um, speak in what? Yes? French. Okay. And if we can just, you know, as he speaks, if you can put it on, is there a way to put that on speakerphone? Because you're doing a Skype call, right? Uh, no, I can. Oh, you can go. Okay, good. And you will be interpreting for him, is that correct? Yep. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, technical difficulties. We were afraid a little bit of this, and we had a backup plan, but the backup plan is, well, not working either. So, sorry, I have to consult with my colleagues for one minute. Can you plug it in, please? Real quickly, though, is there a way he can Skype us? Because I would much rather see him than just hear him on the phone. Yeah, that's possible. Internet, right? Internet, Can we do this in French, the entire thing in French? Sure, um, I, my French is not really good. Uh, it's just numbers. Yeah, no, he's, yeah, he's going yep. to try and, and do it in French. All right, you can speak to him in his language, and yeah. if he could just reveal it to us in French, that would, that would help a lot. But not yet. First of all, I want to make sure that he is certainly was happy with the protocol, yes? Would uh, you get him to say that, please? Okay, Ibrahim, is the protocol satisfactory I don't know. Was good? Hello? Yes, I'm. Oui, est-ce que le protocole est satisfactory? Yes, I'm. 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 
Yes, okay. Would, can I get him to identify himself by name, please? Slowly. Um, and, and how well does he think he's going to do on this test? very confident that he has yes. passed this yes. test. Yes. All right, good. Um, exactly. Yes. Yeah. yes. We, we've been in contact with him. Before. And he just said he asked him that. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, good. So can he give us the number and the name of the first item, please? Okay, Ibrahim. Il a t'adil t'a'tina le numéro ou le nom t'a l'objet. T'a l'objet l'eau. Numéro 5, the papier génique, which means number 5, paper towel. 5, paper towel. Can I get him to repeat that one more time, please? Numéro 5, the paper towel. Perfect. Thank you, Chip. Toilet paper. Yeah, Yes. Okay. Number two, please. Hello? Yeah. We're going to call him back. Now, I do want you, I would like you all to keep in mind that even though I'm saying one, two, I'm getting in that order, the order does not matter at all. He just has to get the items themselves, not in any particular order. First and second, yes, exactly. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Caught myself on that, so. The next object. The the number the the center, which means the number 13, the uh, handle, the, the coat hanger. You know? 13, the coat hanger. Can you say it again, please? Can you all right. And the final object, please. Okay, we can start in a log jail. The number is the sachet of chips. Chips, okay. He said number 22, the sachet of chips. Yeah. 
which means number 22, the chips. 22 of the chips. Yeah. And can we get him to repeat that, please? Can you repeat that, please? Yeah. And because the call was interrupted in the, in the middle, right? yeah. Yeah. just to save any confusion, because the call was interrupted in the middle, can he just call off all three numbers again, okay. please, for us? Okay, Brian, I don't know if you can see three other numbers, but I don't know if you can see the phone. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, perfect, good. I just put the phone down for right now, if you would. Um, and what we're going to do at this point is I am going to ask the only person who has the key to that particular room to come out, and that would be DJ Growth. J DJ, would you come out, please? Thank you very much. I'd like you to give the uh, keys to Richard, please, if you will, because Richard also signed the door as well. And we're going to take a little journey. We're going to head over there. You guys will get to watch it on the screen, and you get to see the door open. Um, if you would just let him know what we're doing, please. Hello? Okay. Uh, oui. Oui, Brian. Bon, on va aller dans le câble avec une caméra. On va aller dans le bête et on va aller là-bas pour découvrir les objets. Je vais aller dans le bête. Qu'est-ce que c'est um, about 10 minutes? Uh, probably less than that, but yes, 10 yeah. minutes, I'd say. But don't yeah. tell, tell him not to go anywhere, please. So we keep him on the online? Yeah, DJ can afford the car, yes. Yeah, Okay. Okay, we're going to go to the online. We're going to go to the maximum 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, all right. Um, if you'll take over. You'll take over, okay. Jamie's going to take over, okay, and so, you'll be able to see it on the screen as we come. So, right, if you guys so the three of them please. are now going to head to the room, and Richard Randy was going to come along with us too. The way the way we originally sealed it, very good. The way we originally sealed it was the the objects were put in place. Only the person who it was only one person who knew what the objects were. Only one person who was present to put them in place, and then the room was initially sealed. Uh, at which point, all of us came to the door, along with his representative, Mustafa. Uh, Mustafa and Richard both signed that card, you've probably seen. And then the doors were more thoroughly taped to everyone's satisfaction. Uh, so now, you can see them on video, going to the room. And uh, so now what's going to happen is they're going to unseal the tape, remove that signed paper, etc. I do want to point out, Jamie, I know you can hear me in there. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I want to point out we are now outside the door. The door was signed by Mustafa. It was also signed by Richard Saunders. Would you, Richard, please check and make sure your signature is on there, please? Um, Mr. Mustafa, would you take a look and make sure that your signature is on there and hasn't been tampered with? Yes? Okay, good. I'm going to ask you, Mr. Mustafa, to please start to remove the tape, if you will. And so once all the tape is um, removed, No, we'll wait until after. Then we'll, the last thing will be to unlock the door. Now, we were given instructions as to exactly what the configuration was of the objects on the table in there. We removed everything else from the room other than the table and the target objects and the per one personal object. And so the first thing that's going to happen when these doors are open is we will ask that Mustafa confirm that everything is according to the originally request and designed protocol. We didn't want to take a picture of that ahead of time or have any other confirmation of that place. because we didn't want any chance of leaking that information. Uh, I'd like you to unlock the door, if you will. Mr. Mustafa, I'd like you to come stand right over here, if you will, please. 
thank you very much. And as I say so, I'd like you to open the door and just kind of step back to the side. I would like the camera to see what the objects are before we even really get to see what those objects are, if you wouldn't mind. Is that okay with you? Yeah, okay. We are ready. And if you would pull this door open, please. So it looks like we have number 11, which is the necktie. Number 23, which is a stuffed uh, elephant. And number 10, which is just a little tea uh, saucer, yes. So it looks as if none of them were correct. So we can now step in, if you would, just bring the camera just a little bit closer. See the person, the, the other object there in the middle. That is would a be number 11. That was the person. Number 10. Object. And number 23, which come on in, in Mustafa? And everything is kind of as it was except for the objects before, correct? Yes? And you would agree that this was indeed just a failure this time, yes? Yes. yes. So they're going to the come back. Lights were on the whole time? Yeah. Okay. No, they, no you would not. Yeah. All right, so let's take the objects back so in there. They're going to come Jamie, back here. Keep them occupied while we come we'll back. We'll contact yes. our test subject and yeah. let him know the results. And uh, we'll just close that door, please. Thank you. So, Mustafa, you're, you're going to reach, go back to the phone and give the information. But can I ask, I'm not sure, just to make sure this was completely asked, uh, you can confirm that what you now saw in the room for the first time was completely uh, consistent with all of the, pro met the requirements of the protocols. They were on the table according to the manner in which it was designed. Everything was, was consistent with that, yes? Yeah, absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, I, you will have to know this open Odin, there should be an open connection. Yep. Whoops. Maybe not now. Oh, it's DJ's phone. Check if she's LTE. Hello. Hey. We have a phone. The phone is all the time. The phone is all the time. The phone is all the time. Any questions? Or? Yes, so I'd like to take questions if that's at all possible. So uh, my first can. question is: uh, uh, Is he surprised by the result, sure. and, and what does he think about the about, about the result? Yeah. Uh, Were 11, 10, and 23. Eh, the first one is 11, 10, and 23. The tie, the sauce, and the cravat, and the top, and the top, and the top, and So what he said, I mean, he already, he already, uh, he already knows that, that it's during Ramadan and it's not uh, optimal uh, conditions, but um, he did his, like more than what he can, like his efforts, and um, and it looks like uh, the timing was was really uh, the, the the factor of timing was more than more than one, what he has anticipated that it would affect him, 
So he's uh, effectively working like seventh of his normal power as uh, outside Ramadan. But, uh, but he, he's, but, he's, but not, he's not, he, he said he's not, he's not giving any excuses. I mean, this is, this is what it is and, and um, can I get you just to ask him one question? Because even before we started this, we did ask, you know, how well he thought he would do. Yeah. And he did say that he thought he would succeed and that he'd be successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't at that point where he did say that, you know, it's only one seventh of my ability at that point. Yeah. But so now, you know, we're saying that. And we understand, you know, respectfully so, it is during Ramadan. He did say, you know, it's not the optimal time right. for but him. When that, he think he would be but successful. But when that aspect was discussed, yes. even though he mentioned that, yeah. we then asked, Nevertheless, are you, are you confident that you can absolutely. do this during this time, or do we have to do the test at another time? Yep. And he absolutely agreed that he and would be he able to do made it that during this period. Yep. Yeah, he could have made that choice, but at, at the time we asked him, he, wanted, he really wanted to, uh, to do it during this event, so that's, that's what, uh, what he was hoping for. Any questions? Yep. So we have time for maybe just a couple of questions. Uh, yes? Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask what was the significance of the arrangement of the items or why was that chosen or why would that help him, I suppose? Bon, Ibrahim, la question c'est الطريقة اللي حطوا بها الزوجية أسكو كان في كان عندها تأثير على على الperformance تاعك ولا على اسمها كcountryion أسكو عندها حاجة سبيسيال ولا؟ نعم هذه ما فيهاش ما هي طبعاً في الـ في الـ في الكاتب حوجه. يسأل. Hmm. Right. So he said no. None of that uh, affected it. It's uh, he repeated again. It's just. Uh, I think. I think the question was, what was the significance of like the distance? You know, that you could actually see the objects and the fact you have the lights on and those things. Is that is that the question? Right, the T-shirts in the center. Why are the objects around it? What is the significance of that? Yeah, as he said, I mean, there is there is no significance as the orientation of the of the objects. So, but very specifically, he wanted your, the T-shirt had to be in the center. Yes, no. No, it's just so that it's uh, it's within equal distance from all the objects because he uses that as um, as a beacon kind of thing to to find the the place. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. What, what, made you, what made you think that it was the paper towels, the coat hanger, and the chips? What kind of senses did he get to make him conclude that those are the items? Okay. Ibrahim, the question is, what made you think that it was the paper towels, the coat hanger, and the chips? What made you think that it was the paper towels, the coat hanger, and the chips? What made you think that it was the paper towels, the coat hanger, اسمه شيء الحاجة اللي خلتك تعتقد باللي هادوك هما؟ well, he essentially said that um, I mean, he, he tried his best to, he doesn't see them very clearly, so it's up to him to, um, to kind of rule out so if, if he sees something that looks like a hanger, he has to somehow rule out that is it, uh, for example, a tie that, that is oriented as the hanger or it's the hanger. So it's, it, there's a kind of, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, ru ruling out process that he has to go through. 
and uh, and maybe he made a mistake uh, to, along the way. So, okay, so next question. I'll, yes, can I ahead. clarify something? Yep. It sounds like it's a visual thing that he's getting. Is that correct? Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's uh, that's actually why um, um, one of the things that we really wanted is that he would um, choose the object. Like, uh, say, for example, I want a small chair, a ball, a car, etc., etc. But uh, just given the, the time of this uh, test, we weren't able to accommodate that. So that's one other, um, you know, that, that's one other factor that, that he, he, it would be ideal for him if he chooses the, uh, chooses the objects. Of course, JRF will, be, will get the actual objects so that there's no trickery there or there's no you know, GPS chip or something. But it's, uh, it would be better if he chose the, uh, the objects, so, yeah. Uh, Jamie, uh, another question? Uh, does, the, does this result make him doubt his ability? Uh, and if not, what kind of evidence would it take? What would it take for him to doubt that he does, in fact, have this ability? Ibrahim Rakhtima. Hello? Yes, Mohamed. Yes, you said that the result will make you check the value of your value. And what is the result that will make you check? It's called the test that you have to do, and you have to start to check the value of your value. Yes, Mohamed, I'm going to check he said he, he would never uh, doubt his uh, his uh, abilities just because for the simple fact that uh, um, they have been confirmed by him and by other people, and um, it's it's not like something that he's imagining or uh, it's just the timing. Again, he said the timing could have affected the results, but uh, at this point he is not uh, he has no doubt in his abilities. We'll take one more question. One please. more question right here. Uh, yes, I, I'm just trying to understand the process a little better. The room was sealed for three days. Did he find one object each day? Did he go to the room more than once? I'm just trying to figure out how he, how he did the process of getting these three items. Uh, uh, hello, Ibrahim.
Yes, so the, he, he would need three days regardless of, of the number of the objects. Um, it's just, uh, he, he said again, it's uh, under the normal uh, circumstances, it would be much clearer that, uh, because he, he kind of sends the question and then he gets the answer after three days, and usually he gets it extremely clear, but uh, because he had never worked during the month of Ramadan, this is a kind of a, a contract that, that he, he follows. And this time it was a kind of a fog, so he, he, he had to really work and try to you know, rule out or, or try to guess which object it is. So, so that's... Uh, Mustafa, yeah. could you please convey to Mr. Adun, because we realize this is the time of Ramadan, the James Randi Educational Foundation is willing to forego the normal 12-month waiting period, and if he wishes to reapply again, he can do that when he feels comfortable. So, um, we so we're willing to reschedule a test as, as soon as he wishes outside of Ramadan. So, uh, راهم عطاوك اون اكسيبسيون انك تقدر تابلاي خطره وحده في خطره اخرى بعد رمضان مباشره يسمى ماشي لازم تستنى دوز موا باه باه دير لابليكيشن تاعك. شكرا لك شكرا لك شكرا لك and he, he said then, then it, it will be fair because he will be working at his full capacity and, uh, and he appreciates it. Would you convey our, our greatest thanks for him for being part of this TAM this year, please? And tell him we will be in touch? Okay. Thank you. We, we do want to say, and Randy wanted want to make sure that we yeah. said that uh, our uh, applicant and also his representative, Mustafa, have been absolutely forthright, easy to work with uh, throughout, and uh, made every effort to make sure that everything was communicated clearly from both sides. And uh, we're very grateful. Absolutely. For all yeah. Your yeah. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, for, um, from, from my side, I would like to, uh, to thank JRF and, um, um, and really the, designing the, the protocol was really a, a very unique experience for, uh, for me and it's, I, get, I get to know um, that I'm working with professionals. I mean, professionals in this, in this specific uh, area, right? And, um, and again, I'm, I'm wearing the, uh, the t-shirt of, uh, you know, <laughs> the <papers. laughs> so, so really, I'm, I'm actually as passionate as any one of you here uh, in fighting the fakers as any one of you. And, uh, and again, we're uh, still looking for that uh, paranormal or supernatural, um, if it exists or if not. So that's... that's um, you know, that, that's the right mindset, right? Open, but, uh, but very skeptical. That's, uh, yeah. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Mustafa, ladies and gentlemen. So, we come to the end of not just another MDC, but we come to the end of another TAM. Sadly so but also excitingly so, because that means we have to start getting ready for next year. <laughs> and that starts now.
So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank each and every single one of you for coming here. I know some of these uh, MDCs take a little bit long, and even like here with the communication back and forth is a little bit awkward, but I'm sure you understand what we have to go through, and, and you get a much better look at what it is that we, we all go through. And this is a, a collective effort. We are definitely a team, and none of us could do any of this without each one of us, and especially without the amazing Randy. I mean, his guidance is invaluable in this. Something you want to say? And we, we also really appreciate your enthusiastic attention to this. Last year, uh, I have to say, we were really worried up here about the amount of time it took, and, and it was really kind of a difficult process. And uh, later on tonight at the Del Mar, where I will be in mere seconds from now. I, I, I will be there for a little bit. I've got to pick up a dead body at 7 Race you there, mofo. Uh, but you know, people more than one, at the first one I thought it was a joke, uh, I thought I was being punked, uh, but you know, by the third time of the night people came up and said, you know, the MDC event was our favorite event of the conference. And I think what that speaks to uh, is uh, people who really understand what we're trying to do here at the JREF, what the MDC represents about our mission uh, in the larger sense of it, and your focus and your attention to that, attention to that uh, means a, a tremendous amount to us all. So thank you very much. Well said. Thank you and good night. Thanks a lot.